Hi everyone, I'm Miglena, a pole dance instructor and video creator. You might have come across my YouTube channel or my website, The Pole Dancer, which is where I share tips, tutorials, and I give classes for improving fluidity, transitions, and all those little details that make your routines look like a dance and not just tricks. Today we'll talk about grip. We'll go over all the different factors that affect your grip. We'll cover skin types, temperature and humidity, pole finishes, strength and proper technique. I'll show you the five most common grips we use in pole dancing with common mistakes that students make and how to fix them. Stick around, some of these mistakes aren't that obvious. When I started pole dancing, I struggled with grip. And it's not that the problems just disappeared. Today, nine years later, I still have grip issues sometimes, but the difference is that now I know exactly what to do about it. Back then, it was one of those mysterious things, and I was dying to know, is it only me? How do others deal with it? What's the secret? Sometimes I'll have good grip, and sometimes my grip will let me down. I wanted to do all those tricks that I learned in class, but at home, I kept sliding down. It was super frustrating. I researched how to break the grip of my new home pole, and what I found was quite discouraging. I found a bunch of grip products on the internet, which gave me hope, but it was kind of like tapping in the dark. I was just purchasing different products and hoping that one will work. At some point, I even thought, I'm buying a, a silicone pole. <laughs> I just want to have a reliable grip. But I'm glad I didn't do that. Understanding that it's actually a mix of factors, my skin combined with the climate or the room temperature, my body temperature and the pole finish, that took me some years. Your skin type affects your grip. Whether it's dry, oily, or prone to sweating, there are different ways to deal with it. For example, I have dry skin. My hands are dry, which is good for the pole, but my body is naturally not tacky. It lacks that little bit of moisture that makes skin tacky. This gets worse during winter, flaky skin everywhere, zero grip, so I don't need an antiperspirant like most pole dancers probably do. Exactly the opposite. I need a moisturizer that's not oily or creamy. So if you have the same problem, then glycerin is your answer. This is the main grip that I use. I mix my own grip with glycerin and water. It's super easy. You can play around with the proportions depending on how strong you want it. Use more glycerin to make it stronger for the winter or less to make it less strong in the summer. Now it's important that this grip is not for the hands. It's only for your body if you have dry skin. You can apply it on your shins for climbing, between the thighs for sits, leg hangs, on the side of your waist, on the inside of your arm, all of the contact points of the moves that you're attempting. This is if you have dry body skin. If you tend to sweat, and I think that's the main issue for most pole dancers, especially on the hands, then you can use antiperspirant. There are different products, some are based on chalk powder, liquid chalk, raisin, beeswax. You really have to try out some different products and see what works best for you. So to sum up, for a good grip on the pole, you want your hands to be dry and you want you, your body to be slightly moist, but not sweaty. A word on grip aid. How much are you supposed to rely on grip aid? Is it cheating? Can it be bad for you? It's not necessarily a bad thing, but you might be doing yourself a disservice if you rely too much on it. As a beginner, you should work on building up strength in your back, shoulders, arms, hands. And if you use, let's say, too much hand grip, this might keep you from engaging the right muscles in your back. You might become less aware of muscle engagement. 
Grip 8 could make the strength building process a little bit longer than usual by making holding on to the pole too easy. The main mistake students are making is that they apply too many layers of grip, which makes you start sliding again. You have better grip if you use just small amounts of grip. And after three or four applications, you should wash your hands, remove the grip completely and then reapply. Also, a too sticky grip will make some transitions a lot harder. If you need to rotate or slide down with your hands, then being glued onto the pole is kind of counterproductive. Before you reach for the extra grip, you should first check, is my body warm enough? While a proper warm-up is essential to avoid injuries, it also provides better grip. Also check, is my pole warm enough? A cold pole is always slippery. If your hands are sweating, wash them with cold water. Clean the pole more often with alcohol. And you can also use the same towel for the hands because the alcohol will make them more dry. Sliding is very common at the beginning. This gets better as you become stronger and more confident. Some pole dancers talk about the psychological effect of confidence and that with practice we are less nervous, we are more focused on the moves and on the technique and we get distracted from grip issues that we initially have. So this makes you sweat less. So use grip aid if nothing else helps. Use grip aid if you're performing difficult and dangerous tricks high on the pole, especially upside down where you have to really rely on your contact points. And use grip aid during performances when you are more nervous and when you're sweating more than usually. Your grip can change throughout your training session, from too slippery at the beginning when the pole is not warm yet, to too sticky and maybe again too slippery if you're sweating, at the end of the same training session. Your grip also changes seasonally. If you generally have tacky skin or you struggle with sweat, then you have better grip in the winter and worse in the summer. If you have dry skin and you barely sweat, then you will enjoy better grip in the summer and you have harder time in the winter. Personally, I escaped the European winter because of that and I traveled to South America. The tropical climate there gives me the moisture that I need. But for most people, this climate is way too hot and humid. They slide down the pole because they sweat more. It's very individual. You have to make your pole space suitable for your own needs. Get it to the temperature and the humidity that works best for you. This could mean putting on the fan or the AC if it's too hot, or heating the room if it's too cold, or using one of those pole warmers for the cold winter days, which I have not tried yet. Last but not least, your pole's finish affects your grip. We have stainless steel, which is more slippery than the other pole finishes. Maybe not the first choice for beginners, Unless you have nickel allergy, then it should be your first choice. It's suitable for naturally tacky skin, for warm and humid climates. I have none of those, but I still have stainless steel because I like how clean, smooth and natural the grip feels. Once the pole is warm, it's very reliable. I also started relying more on my muscles and I gained more strength because the pole doesn't provide extra grip. I would say it's more for the advanced students. Chrome is the most popular finish for pole studios, for competitions, for home poles. It's for most skin types and also for different climates and especially for colder ones. Most people buy chrome because it suits most needs. Brass is the stickiest metal pole. It absorbs sweat and humidity very well, which makes it good for beginners and people who struggle with sweat. It's perfect for humid climates, 
but it could be a bit too sticky for some transitions like static rotations, drops and power spins. Powder coated paws are often preferred by beginners and people who generally struggle with sweat. The extra sticky layer makes it much easier to grip. This might make spinning shapes and combos easier, but there are some limitations on static. There you have less rotational freedom for static spins, static rotations, drops, etc. But it's good for outdoor shootings and cold weather. I'm not going to cover the silicone pole because I think that if you are learning pole dancing, you should learn on one of the other pole finishes. The silicone pole is so sticky that it limits your pole repertoire quite a bit. The technique and the muscle engagement change. But if you've tried the other pole finishes and you really struggle with grip, then do your own research and see if that's an option for you. So as you see, there are many things that affect your grip, some of which you have control over and some of which you have no control over. But one thing we haven't spoken about yet and you do have control over is your technique. There are common mistakes I see over and over again, like the way you hold the pole, the placement of your arms and contact points, the muscle engagement. So let me go over the five most common grips in pole dancing and the mistakes that could affect your grip. The first mistake beginners make is squeezing and holding too tight with the fingers, which can create a gap in your palm. Instead, you want to hold with your palm. Open your fingers and press your palm into the pole. Then wrap the fingers around to grab. On static, you can keep the fingers slightly loose and lean out to allow rotation and to create a position. In the regular overhead position, Make sure that you're not over wrapping the paw with your hand. Keep your wrist straight, one line with your arm. And also as you're pulling down, don't bend your elbow. Don't use your biceps unless you're pulling yourself up. But pull down from your scapular. So reach high, shoulder goes up, and then bring that shoulder blade down. Your arm remains straight and your elbow rotates slightly forward. It should feel like you're holding from your back and not from your arm. The stronghold grip is a key grip for inverts, aerial transitions and some flow moves like the fan kick. Common mistakes are Having the hands too high, which prevents you from engaging the back and the biceps correctly. So slide your hands low in front of your face, hips are in front of your body, head behind. Outside hand is on top. Also here, don't over wrap and twist your wrists. Keep them straight. To engage the back, draw a big circle with your shoulders back and down. Pull the elbows forward and squeeze the pole in your inner arm. Keep that strong position of the back all the time. You're using not only your back, but you're also using your biceps to pull down on the pole. The how bracket grip uses the pull and push technique. The inside arm, the top arm is pulling down and the bottom hand, the outside hand is pushing out on the pole. Just like in the regular true grip, you reach high and you're pulling down from your scapula. Arm is straight, shoulder down. This arm is doing 80% of the work. That's why this is not a very easy beginner grip. Even though beginner spins like the chair spin use this grip, 
These pins are actually harder because they require a good one arm strength and you're relying on one arm to hold most of your weight. But the common mistake here is actually the outside hand. Often students have it too high and when you have it high, let's say in front of the chest, you can't push, you'll be more pulling down. So have your hand low between the chest and belly button height, have some opposition, some distance to the pole and use the bottom of your hand to push the pole away. So have the fingers loose and maybe slightly pointing up to the ceiling to push. This helps you keep a position in spins like the fireman spin, the sun wheel, yeah, and the chair spin. The form bracket grip, which we use a lot in climbing, also uses the pull and push technique. Your entire form is touching the pole, your elbow is slightly across to the other side of the pole, it's between the chest and the pole, and the top arm is pulling down. Now, very often students have the bottom arm too high. I see this even in some advanced students. Now, this might be enough for climbing when the legs stay on the pole, but the moment you release the legs, this might not be enough strength to push. For me personally, it works best if I have the bottom arm really low, wrist at shoulder height, and I tilt my torso slightly to the side. Notice how your shoulder goes to the front and away from your body when you push and your torso opens slightly to the side. The full bracket grip, which is also known as a split grip, is a fairly advanced grip, but it's sometimes taught to advanced beginners and intermediate level students. It also uses the pull and push principle, but with fingers pointing down. Also here, your focus should be on pulling strong with the top arm. The more you pull down with the top arm, the less pressure you're gonna have on the bottom arm, which is the main issue here in this grip. So imagine that you're trying to square your shoulders as you pull and push on the pole. Don't let the upper body collapse over the bottom arm as you lift the legs off the floor. Make sure that the wrist of the bottom arm does not twist to the side, keep it straight. And it might be helpful to straighten the pointing finger for more stability. A common question is, do you have the bottom arm bent or do you have it straight? It is slightly bent, but the sensation that you have is that you're trying to straighten the arm, but it never straightens completely. A typical not so beginner spin on the floor that uses the split grip is the carousel spin. So this is not a beginner friendly grip. It can be tough on the wrists. I've personally had wrist pain from it when I started learning it and I didn't have the strength yet. If your wrist and elbow is aching, don't continue. Give them a rest and add wrist conditioning exercises to your regular training to gradually build up the strength. Some of these grips need some extra strength and practice. They can be tricky, especially for beginners. To make them rock solid, I've prepared a 10 minute conditioning video that you can include in your regular pole practice. It's for free and you can get it on thepoledancer.com slash conditioning. This workout is designed to improve your grip, your upper body strength, and your technique on the pole. I've selected my most favorite exercises for my classes that cover the most common grips. 
It's easy to follow along. Just press play and follow the variation that suits your current level. I've included different progressions for different levels so that you have a goal to work towards. This is the poedancer.com slash conditioning. I hope that this presentation was useful for you. Let me know. If you have any questions, you can find me on Instagram at miglena.thepoledancer. You can also contact me through my website, thepoledancer.com and check out my YouTube channel, also called The Pole Dancer. I have a bunch of tutorials, many of them are beginner friendly. I hope you got something out of that. Take care and I'll see you soon.